What's up guys? I wanted to give a quick update on whale behavior right now and kind of show off how many of our top holders slash whale metrics work uh, using Ethereum as an example, because obviously uh, it is the top asset with Bitcoin not having uh, full whale data accessible. Uh, Ethereum is our top coin that we have whale behavior for, and a lot of altcoins tend to ebb and flow based on what's going on with whale action. <coughs> right now, what we're looking at is the uh, supply held by the top addresses. Uh, in this case, it is the top 10 uh, Ethereum addresses that we have publicly uh, accessible. Um, so what we're essentially looking at right now is the last one year of the total amount of Ethereum and the percent held by the top 10 addresses over time. Uh, some people think it's a good thing when whales own more, others think it, it is a bit of a bad thing. Uh, personally, our team mostly thinks this is good when you're talking about literally the top 10 addresses, very likely that you know at least half of those 10 are exchange addresses. Um, it doesn't completely invalidate the value of showing how much these, these exchange addresses are holding. Um, but there's still other addresses that may not be exchange addresses. And generally speaking, when more is being held, um, it, it's a good prospect for the coin being able to recover over time. Uh, and over time, over the past year, we can see a clear uptrend here. Um, obviously, the big drop off or the biggest, I should say, over the past year happened in mid-November where the top 10 Ethereum addresses went from 18.3% all the way down to 16.7% in the matter of just about a week. Uh, and notice how right when it plummeted here, this was actually a pretty sizable drop, uh, the biggest at least since the beginning of September 2020. This was a, a pretty huge drop almost three months later, right after the whales, uh, you know, dumped off. And this is, of course, a bit of a hand-picked metric. You can see that the correlation between price um, and these top 10 whale addresses is not perfect by any means. But, you know, like the really big one here, of course, in early April, uh, this is when the whales were holding over 20.5%. And after the all-time high, they were actually down to 18.46%. But notice how almost about a little over a month, I should say, before the all-time high hit, we had that big drop-off that started to occur. And then after the plummet, right when it bottomed out, look how the whales started to uh, accumulate once again. Of course, there was all this ranging, and we're still in this ranging um, pattern right now. But overall, we'd call this a pretty good sign that the top 10 addresses are still owning a greater and greater percentage of the supply of the second largest market cap asset in the world. Um, I can also switch this to only top non-exchange addresses. And we see a pretty similar trajectory. Um, this is actually showing just the total amount uh, of Ethereum tokens held by the top 10 non-exchange addresses. They were at about 7.5 million uh, at tokens held about a year ago, and look where we are now, 21.05. We're talking about almost a 3x, you know, maybe a 2.9x or so since last year in the amount of Ethereum tokens held by these non-exchange addresses. I can also take that off and only show, if I can find it, exchange addresses. And this is actually a good sign. Um, exchange addresses going down means that there is less and less of the supply that could be at risk of a sudden sell-off. Um, obviously, if you're a top 10 whale for the second biggest coin in the world, um, you have enough to easily move the markets uh, in the direction you want it to go. And the less and less that are being held by these top 10 exchange addresses, uh, the, the less of a risk there is of a huge sell-off coming in the future. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to back this out to five years. And you can see, you know, this same pattern kind of occurred 
right in the midst of that 2017 bull run that a lot of you veterans might have been a part of um, on the first go round. And then this big accumulation cycle occurred while the price was stagnant. Um, so they were they were actually getting more and more tokens on the exchanges, while a lot of people in, in mid to late 2018 were very much down on uh, the price of Ethereum. I should say 2018, right about there, all the way until mid 2019. Um, I think, tw yeah, this is about where it bottomed out in December 2019. And then things slowly started to climb. And um, just like in 2017, when we started to have this huge climb, that's when the exchange addresses were plummeting again. And the plummeting of these top 10 exchange addresses tend to correlate and signify bull runs based on uh, what history has shown. All right, so that is... Um, just a quick look at the exchange, top exchange, top non-exchange, and overall supply held by whales. We're going to move on quickly to whale transaction count. I'll make this chart a little bit bigger. Um, essentially, this is kind of a volatility indicator. Uh, when you see a really big spike, obviously this one being the biggest of the past six months, as I'm showing right now, um, it's a sign of a turning point in price. Um, if it's happening when you know, the price is rising, it might be a sign that the price is about to drop. One of the, this actually was the second biggest spike in the last six months. And look, it essentially occurred um, a day after the all-time high hit. So this was a, especially with a cluster of them like this, this was a pretty big signifier that some whales were taking profit and probably moving the price in another direction. Um, this little one here, I, I should say big compared to all the spikes around it, um, this correlated right with a temporary local bottom in, in mid to late June, you know, eventually got a little bit lower, but this spike here likely had something to do with the ability for Ethereum to start climbing again. Um, and we haven't really seen anything special since. So Ethereum whale transaction counts, which are deemed any transaction that is valued at over a hundred thousand dollars in USD. Um, they've been relatively silent for now. But these are counted not just by individual whales, they're the total amount of those $100,000 plus USD transactions. So on May 19th, you know, just about uh, a week or so after the all-time high, we had 11,623 of those transactions occur um, that exceeded $100,000. Notice this big one here too. Um, it's very similar to what we just saw with this one, where we kind of had this this high whale transaction count pushed the price up and then it actually plummeted down again, but eventually it started to climb past the point in which this spike happened. Um, and that's kind of what happened here on a more mini scale. So right now, what we're going to be looking for is another big spike, whether it's happening on a huge climb or a huge drop, um, especially if you see a cluster of them. That's a pretty good sign that the price is about to reverse and move in the other direction, thanks to all of these very, very high-end transactions that are occurring on the ETH network. All right, moving on to the last and final category, which is probably our favorite right now. This is supply distribution. Um, what we're looking at here, I'll make it a little bigger. What we're looking at here are four different tiers of uh, Ethereum addresses and the amount of those addresses that are of that particular size. So the tan line is any Ethereum address that is that currently holds one Ethereum or less. They're kind of the mini uh, addresses. Mini is relative, obviously, because one Ethereum is still uh, quite large these days at about $2,200. But this is kind of the, the <coughs> bottom tier, so to speak, all combined, um, all the way down to 0 0.0001 or so. Um, and th they've essentially kind of flattened out. It's quite interesting. Ever since the the all-time high hit, just shortly after, when people were kind of buying the dip here for a while, but after about a month, yeah, a month or so of waiting, maybe even just a few weeks of waiting, this tan line actually started to stagnate um, and go down a bit. Um, and it, it essentially means that the the those beginners, the the people that were kind of entering the space and really trying to take advantage of this all-time high, um, 
they got they got freaked out. They're considered the weak hands because they don't have as much to risk. And it was, you know, I wouldn't call one Ethereum play money, but, you know, 0.001 or so. That's definitely play money for most people on this planet. And they just they lost interest, so to speak. Um, looking at the next tier, we have the pink one, which is showing ten, uh, one to 100 Ethereum. And this is a very large uh, spread, maybe even um, you know, most of you watching this might be under that category. Um, if not, maybe just slightly under one, but the pink addresses are actually starting to rise pretty rapidly right now. Um, especially since, you know, we bottomed out here around June 21st to 23rd or so 24th, maybe we've, we've seen an increase from, let's just look at the 24th. We had 1.19 million on the 24th. And now we're up to 1.24 million. So we're talking about uh, a, a pretty sizable increase, maybe a 4% increase just over the past uh, month or so. Looking at the red bar or, or red uh, tier, I should say, it's going in, in a pretty flat direction now after mostly moving down, quite interestingly. So the the amount of 100 to 10,000 um, Ethereum addresses was plummeting for most of the past six months. And now that it's, you know, the prices have been ranging, they've kind of flattened out. And last but not least, and probably the most important is the, uh, the 10,000 plus Ethereum addresses. This includes obviously those top 10 addresses, um, either exchange or non-exchange related. They're all definitely 10,000 plus on both sides. Um, and they've, they've been ranging right now. Um, a lot of the time, the price tends to follow what's going on with the gold right here. So like looking at April 9th, 2021, we had this huge, huge run up in the, the gold tier going from uh, looks like 1,245 addresses on April 9th all the way up to 1,363 just about a month later on May 11th. Ever since, sort of flat, not a lot going on. Um, it, it's going to be interesting to see which way these number of addresses eventually break because price will likely um, have some correlation here. So that's balance of addresses. And then on a similar note, I want to show the percent of supply. So this is similar to the very first chart that I let off this video with. Uh, percent of supply is essentially showing um, that the gold tier Actually, I'm sorry, the, the colors are a little swapped around. So in this case, the gold on this chart is actually blue. So the whale line, the only one that I'll, I'll walk through really quick, is blue on this one. And these 10,000 plus Ethereum addresses were sitting at about 67.78% about six months ago. They're now up to, they, it actually had just gotten over 70%. And it's now at essentially 70%, 69.97. So a little bit of, of kind of flatness going on here over the past month or so, but they're certainly not dropping, and that's a good sign. Um, and, and the blue line does drop. If I go back to five years, look at, look at how much things have changed with the blue line. I'll actually just take off the others here to make it a little less distracting. <clears throat> so it actually bottomed out the, these whales about three years ago from today. We're sitting at about 62.2% of the supply compared to today where it's basically right smack dab at 70%. So three years from now, uh, the, these whales have added 7.8% of the total amount of Ethereum into their wallets. Um, that's, that's humongous. That's, I don't, I don't want to say this for sure. I'm not going to do mental math. It's at least hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm no, it's, it's definitely billions, definitely billions of dollars. So interesting to see here, you know, we saw this huge plummet. Um, this was when Ethereum was still very young and, and addresses were just being rapidly made. So this has to be taken with a bit of a grain of salt, but it's becoming much more leading now. Um, you know, right here, for example, last year or so, 13 months ago, 
this is when we started to see this big uptick after it dropped down. And right after that, that's when we had this big climb, a little bit of flatness, and then a huge, huge climb. So the whale addresses here definitely play a part. And um, I just wanted to show you guys multiple ways to look at whale behavior because they are, you know, easily one of the top three most leading things to look at on Sandbase Pro. If you don't yet have a membership, I highly recommend it. Just make an account uh, and you get two weeks free to unlock all of the charts and metrics and indicators that we have. And you can freely explore what's going on in real time for your favorite crypto assets. We go way beyond just Bitcoin, Ethereum. We have over 1,800 assets that we have data for. Um, any Ethereum-based asset, we have tons of whale data, all of the same stuff that you can regularly see on Ethereum. It's there for any Ethereum-based project. But even if it's not an Ethereum-based project, check out all of the data that we have because you won't be um, lacking in information. I'll tell you that much. Uh, that's all for now. Talk to you guys very soon.